Good afternoon, this is Andrew Charnetsky and today I'm going to show you how to export our den scene here into Pure Light. This scene is a good example of different mesh types, different lighting options. It's a little more advanced than the Cornell box you may have uh, watched earlier. So I have this scene here and it's already been broken up into discrete parts. This is important because it allows me to control light map resolution on each part independently. So the first thing I need to do is export these pieces uh, from Max in either ASC or Collada format for Pure Light. So I'm going to take the walls here, export selected, and I'm going to export that as LMA walls. I'm going to hide that. The next piece I'm going to export is the floor. Now because the floor is uh, flat, doesn't have any holes in it, doesn't have any curves or smoothing, I'm going to actually export that with a different prefix. I'm going to use LM. The LM prefix is uh, it has a faster form of filtering, which means it'll preview faster, it'll bake faster, but it doesn't work on curved surfaces. So I'm going to export that as LM floor. The next piece, I'm going to export the trim to the floor here. So if I isolate the selection and show you, if we just map this flat, we're going to have some wasted space in the middle. Wasted space on a light map is wasted memory, so we really don't want to light map this in the usual sense. Now I could manually unwrap it and separate these sections, or in this case here, we're going to use another prefix that we have set up for pre-light. That prefix is LMX. So LMX floor edge. With the, uh, the LMX prefix, which I'll show you during conversion, it aggressively breaks apart L shapes. So it can make fairly messy light maps uh, for complex pieces, but for something like this trim or edge, it's perfect. So now that I've exported that, I'm going to hide that. I'm also going to export our ceiling. So the center part, I'm going to do LM ceiling. And the edge, I'm going to do the same as before. So LMX ceiling edge. Now that I have these basic pieces, I'm actually going to create my scene file and just get a sense for the light map resolution, the base lighting. Now, normally I could export the whole scene or it's really up to you when you want to get the first bit of lighting on your project. So I'm going to use pre-light here. First thing I need to do is create a scene file. So scenes, den demo. Now my scene happens to be in inches. So I'm going to be using 39 uh, inches per meter. And I'm also going to drop the indirect filter radius. I'll talk about that a little bit later in this tutorial. So that sets our defaults. Now I'm going to convert light, uh, texel size of approximately two inches per texel is perfect. So I'm going to go convert, optimize. You can see here it's digesting our walls, ceiling, edges. You can see here are our meshes. Notice how on the LMX pieces, if we left it originally, we'd have this big donut-shaped hole. Instead, it's broken it up into these discrete parts. So I'm not too worried about the final mapping or light map size at this point. This is just for previewing purposes. So now that I have these pieces digested, I'm going to go File, Load Scene into Pure Light. So I have my really basic... Uh, Density. Notice how the LM pieces are shown in green. That's because they have the fast filtering. So they'll filter really fast, but uh, we can't use that on curved or complex geometry. So I'm going to bake some lighting on this just to show you something here. If I start bake, notice how there actually is lighting on the scene. That's because our background is casting indirect light in through the windows and the door here. Now indirect light is uh, very blocky and blurry. You're not going to get any uh, distinct shadows from it but it, it basically simulates light coming in through, say, an overcast day. We can change the color and the intensity of this background light. That's found in the lighting menu, lighting, change background color. Right now it's just a neutral gray. For example, let's say bright red with a power of five. We should have some pretty dramatic lighting already. Now that's perhaps not what you'd want, so let's change that to something a little more usual. In this case, uh, for background light, uh, Gray-blue tends to work really well. Be a little more on the blue side, and a power of, uh, of one is pretty typical. So this is basically going to simulate just daylight coming in the background. We'll get to sunlight shortly. Now that we have uh, our background light in the scene, I think it's time to add some sunlight. So sunlight, which is a series of parallel rays from one direction, they can either be added through pure light or as a directional light here in 3D Max. So I have a directional light set up. I'm going to take that. I'm going to export that into the lights common directory. The prefix for any sort of point light object is ls. So in this case, I'm just going to call ls sun. 
export it out. I'm going to have to convert it with Prelight, so I'm just going to use File, Open Modified Scene or Files and Scene for Conversion. So this isn't going to see anything that's been recently added. Convert, and then I use File Reload Geometry to bring in any new changes. You can see here under the lights we now have LS Sun. So if I was to bake right now, you'd see the default settings on that sun. So already this is looking a lot better. But to uh, select the properties, let's show lights, LS Sun, or we can use the selection window to select all the lights in the scene. So again, LS Sun. With the sun selected, you can see the rays or sunlights coming from that direction. And uh, by pressing F4 with the light selected, we can bring up its property windows. And so right here, the properties for directional light, whether it's enabled, how powerful it is, and its color. Usually for sunlight, I prefer to have it a little more powerful. So let's go power of three and let's give it something a little bit uh, warm. So let's just rebake the lighting and see what that looks like. You know what, this is exactly what I'm going for. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit here about filter radiuses while I have the scene set up. Right now, the blurriness of this line is defined by two things. It's first defined by the resolution on the light map, and it's second defined by the direct light filter, because these are direct rays coming in through the window. The size of these spots over here, though, this is defined by the indirect filter radius. So if I open up this or the properties for the object by double-clicking on it or pressing F4, I can control the filter radius options right here. So we have direct filter radius and indirect filter radius. So if I was to change the indirect filter radius right now to 4, 4 is typically about the right value to avoid any visible pixelation. I'm going to press Apply, Start Bake. You can see how much noisier it is. Now, because of this extra noise, or because of this extra resolution, so to speak, we're going to get far better definition in the corners. Now, as you can see, it's taking a lot longer to resolve. Typically, we end up having a fairly high indirect filter radius just to keep bake times reasonable. So going back to the properties for this, an indirect filter of 10 usually gives you pretty good balance between uh, detail and time, but for larger scenes or scenes where the indirect light isn't so important, you could go as high as uh, 20, which is the default. So we're going to bring that back to 10. As for the dire uh, direct light filter radius, I'm going to change that from 4 to 10 and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to start bake, so you can see how incredibly buried the direct light is. Now that's nice and soft and you're not going to have any pixelation, but you can also see where uh, uh, it's probably not the quality we're looking for. So I'm going to go back here, change that. If we went something smaller, say 2, see how pixelated it is, and really, again, this isn't something we want. Usually for direct light, I tend to leave the values at uh, 4 unless I need something slightly crisper or I need something slightly softer. So I'm just going to bake that lighting, show you what it is. So there we go. Now I'm going to go back to 3D Max here and continue exporting our scene. So the next couple objects here, let's bring in the, uh, the carpet. So I'm just going to export that as LMA carpet. Just hide that. I'm going to export our trim, this whole trim here. And if you think about how many L-shaped pieces are in this trim, I'm going to uh, eventually change it to the LMX prefix, but I'll start by using the LMA prefix. So LMA trim. So I'm going to open modified files, convert, and we now have two pieces. We have the carpet, which is fairly basic, and then for that trim, you can see how we have all these big L-shaped pieces I was talking about earlier. This is where LMX would be perfect. Now I could go and re-export that, or I could use the rename change type. So I'm going to change that to LMX. You can see it reconverts it here, kills all those big L-shapes. We actually get something slightly better. Now that's a fairly suboptimal light map, though for this kind of initial proofing stage, it's not that bad. So finding optimal gives us something a lot nicer for that same 512-256. File reload geometry, you can see we have two new pieces in here. Lighting start bake, one sample. So you can see it's taking a little longer, mostly because all four CPUs were working on the trim right there. Here ends part one.